The of a network was dedicated point-to-point -point circuit switching. So, you know, when you remember those, you've seen videos of people connecting in switchboards when you, two people make a phone call in the old days? So you literally had a physical wire at the end of the day when you made a phone call between the two ends of a connection. And Kleinrock, uh, who's one of my professors, invented the theory of packet switching networks. Uh, it was uh, his work in UCLA. That was the 60s. The idea of packet switching networks was, yes, you have this wire that connects two endpoints, but instead of that wire connecting two endpoints which are fixed, let's use that wire to move digital packets uh, across. And uh, so that was the original, in, if you think of networking, what's called layer two of networking, which was put together in the 60s uh, and overlaid on top of our, our telecom infrastructure around the world, the US and around the world. And that's, that's the first decade. The 70s was when, uh, and I looked again, I was at UCLA, so I was very kind of was just around me, uh, ARPANET. Everybody knows the defense agency put together this concept of, the, it used to be called a DARPANET, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, became the ARPANET, and the idea was, okay, now that there is a way to move digital packets across wires, let us define the structure of those packets, and that, that structure became IP, and that was a person I worked with way back, was John Postel. John Postel was the guy who spent the internet protocol. Um, so then we said, all right, now we have in the 70s uh, this ARPANET hub that people can move packets called IP packets, so you have routing and you have the ability for the whole world to be interconnected and UCLA and Hawaii and uh, Boston, BBN, these were the hubs of the ARPANET. Um, and uh, then people built they said, well, that's not good enough because now we need apps on top of this. What are we going to do with this connectivity? So the next was when I worked in the 80s, my boss was Carl Sunshine. Carl Sunshine came out of Stanford. He was a, he was a student of Windsurf, and everybody knows Windsurf, right? So Carl's thesis was, guess what, the TCP connection protocol. So when I worked for Carl, the focus was on connectivity at the level of where apps could use it. Sockets, we're back to sockets again, back to the socket layer, but it's built, the original sockets, if you look at Linux or Unix or whatever, is built on TCP. And so in the 80s, it was all about connecting computers using TCP IP, and it moved up from IP to TCP. Still pretty raw, I mean, you think about it, but now I've moved two decades forward, from 60s to 70s to 80s, and we're still talking about sockets. Then comes 1990s. And uh, I happened to be at Oracle, and I ran the internet division. And I remember when Netscape went public, and the first time we turned the internet into an application, into the web, right? And so that was basically the Netscape browser, HTTP, HTML, where it was true application level protocol standardized, and you had content, and so on. That was the next decade. The 90s was all about the web and the browser, and web content and directories, Yahoo became big, um, AOL, instant messaging, communication, it's huge. I mean, that was what we call Web 1.0. And if you lived before Web 1.0, the tools we used were FTP and Gopher, and for people who've actually done work on the internet before the browser, it was command line, working on FTP, Gopher, and you know, just working with command line tools and doing character exchange stuff. And then comes the 2000s, which is all about what we call Web 2.0. You have the social web, which is uh, YouTube, starts with YouTube, which is a loosely connected social network. Uh, you know, strangers mostly, but starting to get to know each other across through the content. And then, of course, Facebook comes about and makes the web social, but not stranger, real identity and real friends and so on and so forth. So that's been the last four decades. You know, internet, what I call internet 1.0, internet 2.0, internet 1.0 is packet switching, internet 2.0 is IP, internet 3.0 is TCP, web 1.0, which is the web browser, web 2.0, which is the social web. And now we enter a new decade, and I think the reason why there are a thousand people here is because we sense the emergence of what I think will be called Web 3.0, which is the mobile web. And 
the mobile web is there's something different about it which has which has never occurred in the previous incarnations of either the internet or the web the previous incarnations of the internet or the web have definitely talked about technology and platforms so whether it's tcp ip whether it's http browser technology and even involved people social web web 1.0 instant messaging email web 2.0 social web um, i think the big deal and why you have a thousand people here is because web 3.0 is about the developer. It's not about the technology, and it's not about the fact that the people will be there. Look, the mobile device will be in the hands of six billion people. So that's for sure. The technology, you're seeing it come to life. It's a matter of a year or two when this will become pervasive. So that's for sure. But the piece that is different is that there is an ecosystem of developers that can directly, if you look at this technology platform, we have the ability, as a I'm a developer, uh, we have the ability as developers to build apps that with a push of a button, because they're built in JavaScript and JavaScript is server-side and they don't have to be uh, uh, submitted to app stores and wait for approvals and all this stuff. You as developers with a push of a button can update the user experience of a million people, a hundred million people, a billion people. Think about that. In the future, you have the ability, just like today, Google, when it changes its homepage to the Thanksgiving theme when it comes time for Thanksgiving, and that's how billions of people view it, that will happen with the mobile web, except the big difference is the mobile web is not websites, it's apps. So for the first time, we will have the ability to take the best of what the iPhone brought us, which is apps, which I think is a phenomenal innovation and then combine it with what the web brought us which is universal access and universal uh, deployment that combination has never happened in our life before right you did have the Googles and the Yahoo's who gave you this instant content deploy you know, deployment but they're not apps they're very general purpose they don't solve specific problems they don't have a user experience that is tailored for a particular segment of users to solve that particular problem or to provide that particular experience. So, and discovery and distribution, okay, uh, is completely locked up on the traditional web, completely, right? We all know that. You have to do SEO, SEM, do some magic, right? And then somehow maybe you'll get discovered. Discovery and distribution on the mobile web is completely open. Nobody's figured it out. We know it's not app stores and we know it's not Google. What is it? And uh, nobody knows, but I bet that some people here in this room of thousand people will be the people who will uh, figure that out. And uh, I'll leave you with that thought that two years from now, we will be building apps, not websites, but apps that provide app-like experiences for a billion people. Thank you very much.